Hi everyone, I wanted to show you how I finished off the werewolf puppet I was making. If you remember, I got sent this doll by um, J Dolls UK in that um, Happy Mail haul. And I separated the head from the body so it was easier to sculpt with. Um, and then I created the claws on the body. And once I'd let the epoxy sculpt dry for 24 hours, then I reattached the body. Um, this bit was fiddly, I could, probably could have done it with like a safety pin pushing this cord through or something. I could have done it easier, but never mind. This worked out in the end. Um, so what I did was I replaced the string because I just cut the string that held the body onto the head. Because the way these work is there's like a there's like a hole that goes through the fabric all through the collar of the fabric and then you put a string through and then where there's that sort of section cut out on the doll neck you pull the cord tight so it go the fabric goes into there and that's how they're attached to the uh, the heads are attached to the bodies on these dolls i found this quite fiddly and the head kept popping out because obviously i'd used epoxy sculpt on the front of the head which meant that the front of the head was heavier than the rest of it so every so often the head would just flop forward um, and fall off so what I had to do was sort of double tie it and get it going and then wrap the string round and tie it once more just to make it nice and firm and make sure it wasn't going to come off so as you can see I'm pulling it around really tight and I'm trying to tuck the fabric in there is one bit of the fabric that didn't quite tuck in but the string's still holding it nice and secure so never mind and then I wrap the string around um, the doll neck and then double knotted it and made sure it was nice and tight I knew this wasn't going to be seen at the end anyway once the doll's covered in fur so it's fine it wasn't a problem um, it is a bit of a funny shaped doll this doll but that's okay sometimes uh, dolls like this do have a bit of a funny shape it's like the body's a bit off scale wise I think compared to the head but never mind once the dress is on the doll, you can't really tell. Um, in the process of reattaching the body, I did manage to knock off two of the claws, which is always the risk with these. Because it's such a small amount of epoxy sculpt, it is easy to um, knock them off. But they, once they're super glued on, they do stay on quite well. I did have to search a bit for the toe claw that's missing, which you'll see in a minute. I'm searching around for there because it, it flinged across my desk and it was like right on the edge of my desk. Now in hindsight I should have done this after I put the dress back on but never mind I just had to re-glue everything again. Um, so I'm just using some super glue and just reattaching this. It's actually like a, um, it's like a silicon type glue that comes with the model making kit and it is really really good at sticking stuff. You just have to give it 10 minutes to set though which obviously I was being impatient and just trying to put the dress on straight away. Um, but once it's set it stays there. And then it was a case of putting the clothes back on. I wanted to do this before doing the fur and everything because otherwise it's a bit of a faff afterwards and you get fur everywhere. Um, and also this just helped me to um, position the hand and the arms are like really long on this doll. So obviously I had to position where the plastic of the hands, like how far I pushed it through the sleeve and that determined like the length of the arm. And luckily, it was a good job that one claw had come off because that one sleeve was really tight and I had trouble getting it off. So then I got the dress all nice and fastened, made sure the ends of those that string was um, tucked in. And I wanted to do this first of all because then anything else, like any fur and stuff I apply, would be on top of the dress instead of underneath it, and it just it'll it just it's easier for me in the end. Then I re-glued the thumb, um, the thumbnail, the thumb claw that I knocked off. Um, it would have come off anyway. I'd have snapped it off anyway getting the sleeve on. For some reason this sleeve was tighter than the other one. Never mind. So as you can see she looks quite cute. And, the, and <laughs> as you can see that toe, toe claw had pling, pinged off again. Um, but I did find it and stick it back on. It was just a bit fiddly because of how small it is. And it kept sticking to my hand. I suppose I should have used tweezers really, but never mind. 
I did try and just push it on onto the glue, thinking the glue hadn't set, but as it, as is always the case, the little bit of glue that was on the on the toe of the doll had actually set, so I couldn't stick it back on, so I had to put a bit more fresh glue on. Then I reattached that and just left that to dry. I held the doll's um, dress up a bit just to make sure it didn't catch that claw. And then here I'm repositioning the arm in the sleeve because it looked weird. It sort of been pulled, I'd pulled it too far through. So you get like a weird sort of lump halfway up the doll's arm, which looked weird. <coughs> and then after doing, getting the dress on and everything, it was a case of painting the doll. Now, unfortunately, my iPad decided not to tell me that the storage was nearly full while I was filming this bit. It just randomly turned off and decided to hide the files. Um, I couldn't see where the files were and it looked like this bit had all been missing. But I managed to say, obviously, the iPad must have saved about half of it. So what I started off doing was painting the nose black and the claws black. And then it was just a case of adding some... Um, brown all over the doll all over the head and all over the face as you can see I did leave the back of the head originally and I realized afterwards when I was applying the fur that I should have painted the whole head because um, otherwise you can see the bright um, flesh tone of the original doll through the fur but I did touch that up later on so all I've done here is I've painted the nose and the claws black given the hands the feet and the face um, just a thin layer of brown acrylic paint i used burnt umber um i was going to use burnt sienna but it came out really weird i think my burnt sienna had gone off um but i used some burnt umber and i did two layers um i didn't want it too thick because i know most of this is going to be covered in fur anyway and then it was just time to reply the fur now I'd forgot how I'd done this originally, so obviously I should have started at the back of the head, but never mind. I did um, take this brown off anyway, I changed my mind. But basically what I'm showing you here is how you apply the fur. What you do is you take some wool roving and you take a small section of it, which you've spread out quite thinly in your fingers. And then you apply a little bit of glue to the doll, put the edges of the little weft onto the doll and then just brush it brush it with the um, paintbrush and then as you brush it with the paintbrush you pull on the fur slightly and what that does is it breaks up that edge so it doesn't look like a perfectly straight edge so it looks a bit more natural and basically you just do this loads all over the head of the doll um, you have to do a few layers the black I've got was thicker than this um, little bit of brown I had um, which is why I changed my mind but as you can see, all you do is just keep brushing the glue on the very tips of that little section of wool roving in your hand. Um, pull it away from the doll slightly just to um, break up that edge. And then just hold it into place and really um, glue it down well to make sure it stays into pos in position. And what I did was... I started off by doing this, as I said, at the front of the face, which I shouldn't have done. I should have started at the back. And what you normally do is you start at the back and you work your way towards the front of the head. And then the thicker sections, are you put thicker sections at the back. Um, and then as you get closer to the face, you do thinner and thinner sections. So it becomes finer and more like baby hairs by the face. And that just creates a more natural sort of furry look for the werewolf. It makes it look like it's kind of like um, grown out of its face as opposed to actually just been stuck on. I was contemplating um, punching all the hair in on this, but then I was like trying to get a coat and a glue on the inside of the doll in the arms, the hands and all of the head. To hold the glue, um, to hold the hair in place afterwards, would have been a pain, and I, I was just like, no, I'm just going to do this the easy way. I will do one at some point where I punch the fur in, um, you know, just actually like reroute the doll, um, and try that and see if I can create a slightly better effect with the fur. I'm not a hundred percent happy with how the fur turned out on this, but it's all right. 
Um, I do definitely prefer doing this on a slightly larger um, baby doll. Um, I think it's just because I could do the fur in bigger chunks. And I do find this annoying after a bit because I just get wool roving stuck all over me and bits of glue everywhere. So it, it can be quite irritating doing this. Um, so I am going to try and find a slightly better method. Um, but for now, it works fine. This is the part where I realised I should have started at the back because I went to apply the next layer and I kept catching the layer in front. I could have done it this way if I really, really wanted to, but it just makes life a lot more awkward. Um, and then I realised as well at this stage that I should have painted the whole head. Um, it looked kind of cute at this point, but you'll see later on. I take, I take all the brown off and just start again. Um... Yeah, I think I'll stick on these next couple of bits and then I realise um, that I should have uh, stuck the uh, back layer on first. So here's where I paint the rest of the head, which I should have done in the first place. I mean, I made the last one, I made the last one about two years ago, so I kind of forgot how I'd made it, really. Um, so... Never mind. Just put a thin layer of the brown all over the doll's head. Anywhere I could see the original sort of flesh tone colour of the doll. Just to cover that up. It just makes it so I don't have to use quite as much of the wool roving. It just helps it blend in a bit better and look a bit darker. Otherwise it kind of looks like a badly rooted doll where you can just see big bald patches. And I went round and painted under the chin and everything. I kind of knew I wasn't going to really see that, but it was fine. I just decided to just save chance in it. I just covered all that, all the area of um, really light skin tone because I wanted it to look like look quite dark on the uh, doll. Then it was time to put some fur on the feet. I don't worry too much about the feet because you're not going to really see them. So I just put some, um, like a little layer of the uh, wool roving on the foot itself. So it looks like a little hairy, furry foot. And then I put a second layer further up the leg to make it look like a hairy little leg. And then... I did the same on the hands, like just on the wrist, I put some of the uh, wool roving and glued it in place under the sleeve. And as you can see, I've removed all the brown and redid the face in black. I started from the back of the head like I should have done in the first place and worked my way forwards. And then here I'm just touching up the paintwork on the face because I've got a couple of scuffs on it while I was doing the back. Um, and also I wanted to make some of the shadows stick up a bit more stick out a bit more and I'm just adding some little highlights on the lip and everything um because I'd put some like little creases and stuff in the sculpt and I wanted those to show up a bit more um I also give the uh, teeth another layer of white to make them stand out more um because obviously painting the brown it was too awkward to try and avoid the teeth so I just painted over the lot and then put the couple of layers of white on afterwards to make the teeth stand out nice and bright I've given her some little yellowish um, cat eye eyes, which were of an old Bratz doll. The Bratz doll was a broken Victoria antique, I believe. And she got like this cat eye um, inset eyes, which I pinched for this doll and push those into the back of the uh, recess. What I had to do was cut a small section at the back of the head, put the eyes in and then glue that section back on. And I glued it, I, I cut it as well, so it was like a flap as opposed to cutting a hole in the back. So I could actually just like bend that back piece of the head back and then re, like reposition it and glue it back in place. Just makes it a bit easier to re-glue it and make sure it's a bit more secure. And obviously I did all that before painting it and before putting the fur on. 
So here I'm just adding a slightly lighter shade to the nose just to add a bit of like a highlight. Oh, sorry, something just made me jump. I heard something on my roof. I've just seen a cat walk across. Oh, that made me jump. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, and then what I'm doing here is there's like a little crease I'd carved into the um, nose, which I'm just touching up with a bit of black. And then adding a little bit of um, a darker brown into the creases where I put frown lines in the sculpt by the eyes. And this is just to make some of those details stand out a bit more. And then what I'll do is, once this is fully dried, I will give it a layer of um, matte varnish to make sure that the paint stays. It should stay fine. I mean, some there is some of the stuff I've got that I've made like with epoxy sculpt where I haven't varnished it and the paint stayed on fine but I will um, put a little bit of varnish on this one and I might even put like a little touch of hairspray on to hold the fur in position and here I'm just adding a highlight around the lower lip and the upper lip and a little bit on the cheeks and everything and the sort of area just like like kind of like the cheekbones You'll see at the minute it looks like a sort of bright stripe, but what I do is I use a wet paintbrush to blend this all in in a bit. Um, this is just to make some of the details stand out because I felt the sculpt looked really dull with the dark colour. Because what I normally do when I do like a sculpture or something is I'll paint it like say black or whatever. And then I wipe off the paint so it create it goes in all the recesses and all the bright bits stand out. But I didn't really do that with this one so I had to sort of paint lighter layers over the top to make some of those details and those shapes stand out a bit. As you can see here what I'm doing is I'm using a wet paintbrush and I'm just smudging and blending in those lighter areas I've just painted on. And I do um, later on get rid of the two bright bits on the cheeks by the eye because I thought they looked weird. that's it really then the rest of it was just touching up anywhere where I'd scuff paint while I was applying the fur um, just making sure I'd not missed anything and uh, then just trimming some of the fur because there was some of the fur that was hanging in the one eye and was obstructing the uh, one eyeball um, and that's it and then I I trimmed the hair at the back. I, I went for the same sort of shape at the back that I did for the Big Brother one. Um, I just kind of like that sort of V shape to the fur at the back. And that just finishes off the hair at the back. And then the ribbon at the front, the two long bits on the ribbon were annoying me. They kept catching on my finger, so I chopped them off. And that's it. That's my baby werewolf that I made. It's a little sister for my other one. I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.